The town's modern art museum has just been robbed. A priceless painting from top-notch artist Floyd B. has gone missing overnight. The museum's manager called Detective Pressfield to help. As soon as he arrived at the museum, he asked to see the security footage of the previous night. He identified three suspicious individuals staring at the painting for longer than usual. The first person, wearing a blue jacket, entered through the museum's front entrance. The security camera caught her staring at the painting from several angles, like she was measuring it. The second person, wearing a red hat, left the museum through the side exit, which is pretty suspicious. And the last person, who was wearing a black face mask, spent a long time looking at the museum's ceiling, trying to identify where the security cameras were located. Take a look at the footage. Can you guess who's the most likely thief? It's the last person. I mean, he was wearing a mask and spent hours trying to identify the security cameras. After that, there was no footage anymore. So that probably means he was successful at leaving the museum with the priceless painting. Samantha and Joanna were stuck at Blue Ridge's airport security line. A security guard found both of them suspicious and asked them to wait while he analyzed the x-ray footage. Take a look at both women. Who do you think is really hiding something? Well, Samantha has a suspicious face, but she probably just wants to go to the bathroom or something. Now, Joanna is definitely hiding something under her skirt. If she had really been pregnant, she would have used the preferential line. And look how much she's sweating. She's probably nervous she'll get caught. Detective Sharon's office was called to investigate a series of mysterious break-ins happening in a fancy neighborhood. At each crime scene, the robber would leave the word closer sprayed in graffiti on a nearby wall. The first place to be robbed was Mrs. Moore's Cafe. Then the criminal's next target was the town's library. After a week, the thief had left his mark in a fancy office building, a supermarket, and a restaurant. It took Detective Sharon a while, but she soon understood there was a pattern to the break-ins. And she was even able to predict what the next break-in would be. Can you figure out what it was? The thief was pretty clever for sure. The first letter of each of the locations the thief entered spelled out the word closer. Since the last location to be robbed was a restaurant, the next place would start with C, restarting the cycle. Most likely, the neighborhood's community center. In the East Valley, there's a beautiful old kingdom known as Piatra. One of the town's most precious symbols is a valuable jewel that is always displayed during the city's festivities. This year, during the last celebration, something tragic happened. The town's jewel went missing. The king was devastated and mad that such an ancient artifact had been stolen. He soon called the kingdom's official investigator to help figure out who had possibly stolen the jewel. The culprit would have to be proclaimed responsible for their theft in front of the entire kingdom. There were many people at the festivity, but the investigator narrowed the suspects down to four people. Amelia said she saw something strange after the bard's presentation. She saw that Benjamin had picked up the jewel and handed it to Carol. But Ben said he didn't go anywhere near the jewel because he had been working on one of the stalls during the fair. Carol said she did go near the jewel, but she had only admired it from up close. And Daniel said that he could swear seeing Carol carrying the jewel, but he didn't see her take it. Based on the testimonies, the investigator had no trouble figuring out who the culprit was. Can you figure it out as well? It was Carol. Almost everyone thought she was involved in the crime. And plus, if you zoom in on her bag, 
you'll see something pointing. Sure looks like a jewel, doesn't it? The town's only DVD rental shop suffered a robbery last night. The store's owner called the police station to report the crime. The detective almost couldn't believe what he was hearing. After all, why would someone steal a DVD when there are so many streaming channels nowadays? The detective asked to see the footage from the security camera and identified three main suspects. Sarah was a middle-aged woman. She said she still owned a DVD player and preferred to watch movies the old way, so she regularly rented from the store. Alex was a recently retired movie director, and one of his favorite pastimes was going to the store. He said he hadn't noticed anything strange the day before, except for a random teenager that walked inside. David was in his teens, and he spent hours in the shop by himself. He said he was doing research for school, but swears he didn't take anything. Can you tell who did it? It was David. The security footage caught him in the R-rated section of the store. He must have stolen the DVD, thinking the store owner wouldn't sell it to him. There's an old museum that only displays ancient Egyptian artifacts. One day, Susan, an anthropology student, went to the museum in order to study some of the art on display. She went into a room full of things, such as necklaces, bracelets, and earrings. She photographed every detail she thought was important for her research, when something caught her eye. Take a look at the image. Can you figure out what it was? Look at those earrings. They look completely fake. Plus, they have a tiny price tag attached to them. The original earrings were definitely missing. Susan reported the crime to the museum's manager. The manager immediately informed the museum's security and opened an investigation. Susan was on the initial suspect list, but after checking the museum's security footage, she was let go. Museum security identified three main suspects. One of the museum's guards, one of the students from the museum's archaeology school, and a visitor. The visitor said he had only popped in for a quick visit. He said he had seen the earrings, but they looked pretty original to him. The security guard said he hadn't seen anything strange going the last few days. Everything was as it should be. And the students said they had studied the earring in a class, but they never got the chance to see it before it was stolen. Soon enough, museum security found the culprit. Can you tell who it was? It was the visitor. When security went to investigate the suspects, they never mentioned that the original earring had been exchanged by fake ones. The fact that he knew there was an original version means that he was the one that swapped them. Yikes. Maya was working on her latest artwork, which was commissioned by a high-end gallery in town. Suddenly, all the lights in her studio went out, and since it was nighttime, She was left completely in the dark. She heard footsteps approaching the studio door, and the next thing she knew, she was feeling dizzy. Maya passed out and woke up in a tiny room that had nothing other than a metallic door. She tried to open the door, but it was locked. That's when she noticed that beside the door, there was a little device where a red sign appeared asking for a password. Below the device, there was a piece of paper with the following hint. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. It took a while for her to understand what this meant. She read the note aloud several times before she finally figured out what the password was. Can you guess what password she typed into the device? Here's how it works. Maya had to type one time the number 2 three times the number four, five times the number six, and seven times the number eight. Reading it aloud was the key to solve this problem. Hannah runs a dance show. 
she arrived in Finland with the three best dancers to perform during the winter holidays. On the first day of the trip, Hannah started to feel really bad and was taken to the doctor. After examining Hannah, the doctor claimed that someone had poisoned the girl. Hannah's manager flew in to interrogate each one of the dancers and find out if they'd had anything to do with what happened to Hannah. Kira said that she and the other girls had left the hotel early in the morning to explore the city. She also mentioned that Hannah had stayed behind to do a conference call in her room. Pam said she had spent the afternoon swimming at the beach and that when she returned, she noticed Hannah was looking pretty bad. April said she decided to go to the museum all by herself since the other girls didn't want to join her. Hannah's manager noticed the girls' testimonies didn't match and that it was definitely one of them who'd done it. Can you guess who is the culprit? It was Pam. Oh, no. She mentioned she'd gone to the beach, but it's winter time in Finland. The water is freezing and mainly frozen this time of the year. She should have worked better on her alibi. Oh, no. Hannah's manager called the police, and they arrested Pam. Kira and April felt bad for their friend, but they still had to put on a show, and now they were a dancer short. The girls decided to look online for a new dancer. They found three girls who might do a good job at replacing Pam. Deborah, Lily, and Sally. One of the girls is a perfect match for the trio. Can you guess who? It's Sally. Both of the other profiles are fake. If you look closely at Deborah's picture, you'll see that the shadow on the back is not hers. It's definitely photoshopped. And look at Lily's birthday information. If that were true, she wouldn't have been born yet. Keith was a singer, and he was going to perform at Bath's House of Performing Arts. He was taking all of his equipment backstage to get ready for a sound check when a police officer ran into the room. The officer said that one of the actors from that night's show was a runaway criminal. There were four actors playing Santa Claus, but one of them was a fake. Take a look at their bags. Can you figure out who the criminal is? It's the owner of the third bag. Santa never shaves off his beard, and that guy is carrying shaving cream. He must be the runaway. Becky just bought new augmented reality goggles. She decided to play one of the games available, and this picture popped up right in front of her. These three people sure are in some bizarre situations, but which one doesn't make any sense? The man on the left is walking on lava. Sure, someone can do that, although it won't last for too long without the right kind of shoes. The man on the right is walking on desert sand, which is fully normal. But the woman in the middle looks like she is walking on burning water. That definitely doesn't make any sense. Felicity was 10 weeks pregnant when she decided to try a new doctor in town. The doctor did an ultrasound of her belly and gladly said, Ah, it's a boy! Felicity looked confused and said, No, I'm pretty sure I'm having twins. Uh -oh. The doctor was the one that looked confused after Felicity's answer. Take a look at both women. Can you tell who's right? Felicity is right. I mean, take a look at this doctor. She isn't even a real doctor in the first place. She's not wearing proper medical attire, and she doesn't look like she knows what she is doing. Alex watched one too many Indiana Jones movies and decided to go to Egypt to explore ancient monuments. He spent days and days walking underground to try to find something valuable. One morning, when exploring a crypt, he ran into a huge wall full of symbols. Among the symbols, there was an encrypted message. It went like this. Sun plus sun equals sign. Moon plus moon equals sign. Wave plus wave equals sign. Can you help Alex figure out the encoded message? This is not an easy one. But here's how it works. Sun has three letters. Moon has four letters. And waves has five letters. So the encrypted message is the number sequence. Six, eight, ten. 
Way to go, you. Take a good look at this image. Can you tell who is smarter? Let's see. There's a part of the house on fire, so ice would be a bad way to try to extinguish it. You would have to wait for the ice to melt into water. But during that time, the fire just grows. Liquid water is the best medium for rapid extinguishment. So the person on the right looks like they know what they are doing. Aura had been searching for the entrance to Bythia, a hidden city inside a mountain for ages. She searched the seven seas and the seven lands until she finally found a hidden door guarded by three ancient creatures. She asked them if this was the entrance to Bythia, but they wouldn't say a word. Finally, the wise owl said she had to give a correct answer to a riddle from each creature, and only then they would tell her about Bythia. The wise owl said, I have branches, yet I'm not a tree. I have a bank, yet I hold no money. What am I? Can you help Aura out? The correct answer is a river. A river has branches that flow into different streams, and the sides of the river are called river banks. The fox was up next, and his riddle said, I have a bed, yet I don't sleep. I have a mouth, yet don't eat. What am I? Aura took a while to figure this one out, but she got it right. Can you guess what she said? It's an oven, duh. Pretty obvious now that you think of it. Up next was the deer. He said, I have a face, yet no eyes to see. I have a tail, yet no ability to wag. What am I? Do you know how to answer this one? It's a clock. A clock has a face with numbers, but no eyes. And it has a tail that we call a pendulum, but it doesn't wag like an animal's tail. The wise owl opened the door and showed Aura that there were three pathways leading to Bethia. She should choose the correct one, otherwise she would get stuck in this in-between place forever and would never be able to get out. Take a look at the pathways. Which one should Aura choose to complete her journey? The first pathway looks like it has some poisonous flowers. The air looks like it's filled with their poisoned pollen, so that wouldn't be a nice one to go. The second pathway has dozens of angry looking stags that could harm Aura, and the last one has a big lake that leads into a trail. She should go with the last one. On a rainy Saturday night, John and Katie decided to stay in, order pizza and watch the Riddle Channel on their TV. On the screen, they saw a man hanging for his life on the branch of a tree. He was surrounded by angry people. Down below, there were a group of guys with huge bats waiting for him to let go of the branch. And above him was an angry guy on a helicopter ready to grab him. Is there any way the guy can escape this trap? He should throw the bat that's in his pocket to the floor aiming at the group below him. Hopefully, it would hit the guys below on the head, so he could let go of the branch and run as fast as he could into that nearby tunnel. This way, he'd escape the helicopter dude as well. It's Lily's birthday, and Leah offered to treat her to a spa day. They arrived at the marvelous Pink Lotus Boutique Spa for their day of treatment and were sent to different rooms. One of the women received a text on their phone saying, Be careful. Take a look at the image. Can you tell which friend is in danger? It's Lily. The drink on that waiter's tray is definitely poisoned. She should get out of that place as fast as she can. Hello. Jonah woke up in a different timeline. Normally, he was a straight-A student, but in this reality, he was a pretty bad student. 
His teacher put him in detention to see if his grades would get any better. During detention time, he had to solve some puzzles. For each puzzle he solved, he got points that would help him raise his grade. His first task was to find the difference between both images. He only had a few seconds though. Can you help? Yep, that one on the right didn't have the scribble on the paper. For his next detention challenge, Jonah had to spot the difference between these two rabbits riding a motorcycle. Don't ask too many questions, just help him out. Yep, it was the helmet all along. Dana is a swimming champion preparing for her competition on Monday. 24 hours before the big day, she disappears. Nobody can find her. Her mother calls the police and asks them to investigate the crime and they come up with three suspects. All of them are swimmers. Hannah says she hasn't spoken to Dana since their last practice. Mm. Ashley explains that she invited Dana for lunch on Saturday, but Dana refused because she was getting her hair done for the competition. And Melanie says that she spoke to Dana the night before. Dana told her that she was feeling anxious before the race. One of the swimmers is lying. Who is it? I mean, it's definitely Ashley. It doesn't make sense for a swimmer to get her hair done before a swimming match. It will get wet anyways. Daniel is a sailor on a large cruise ship. One day the captain asked him to go to the ship's lowest deck and get some supplies. But as the man was walking down the ladder, it broke and he fell down. Try as he might, he couldn't get out. And oh no! The situation was worse than he thought. There was a hole on the ship's hulk, and water was starting to fill the lower decks. Take a look around. Is there anything Daniel can do to save himself? Yep, he could put on a life jacket and wait for the water to fill the lower deck. He will simply float upwards, and then he can climb up those stairs again. I mean, if that ship doesn't go all Titanic, right? Yeah! Amelie was exploring her grandmother's closet when she came across something spectacular. Ah. A time machine. She set the date back to the 16th century and pressed go. She spent the day exploring a local market, but people kept looking at her differently. One man came up to her and said he knew she was a time traveler. He locked her in his basement and said he was going to look for where she hid the time machine. Amelie was so frustrated she got caught and was afraid she might never go back to her real life. That's when she saw that the basement had an old piano. Do you have any clue how Amelie can use that piano to escape? That's a tricky one, but she should play it until she finds the right key. You decided you needed to go on an adventure, yeah. so you packed your backpack and went hiking the Appalachian Trail. The thing is, since this was your first hike ever, you planned poorly. Your water only lasted for a day, and you needed a refill. Oh, no. There are four sources of water before you. A pond, a lake, a juicy cactus, and a stream. Which one should you drink water from? Most cacti are toxic, so you should keep away from them. The waters from the pond and the lake are stagnant water, so this means they could be filled with stuff that isn't good for you. So that leaves the stream water. Way to go, you oh yeah. It's getting rather late, and you realize you're lost in the middle of the forest. Your phone's GPS is not working, and you're standing at a fork in the road. You can choose between four roads leading north, south, west, or east. The path that heads north will lead you to a black hole. The road that leads south goes through a lake full of huge whale sharks. The one that leads east passes through a crater-sized hole. And the one that leads west will take you to a sky-high mountain that is impossible to climb over. Which way will you choose? You should head south. 
Whale sharks pose no threat to people, and it's probably not true that they exist inside that lake. I mean, they are sea creatures. Harry has spent the last two weeks in Egypt exploring ancient pyramids. He's an archaeologist, and he was looking for some groundbreaking discoveries on the history of the mummies. Inside one of the pyramids, he found a secret chamber. Written on this chamber's walls was this. If one can answer correctly, an ancient secret will be revealed. And right below this, Harry found a riddle. The next answer that should escape your lips should be the creature wrapped up in cloth strips. Can you guess what Harry should answer? Mummy! He should simply say the word mummy. Tom escaped from prison by digging a long tunnel in the floor of his cell. He had been crawling through the underground tunnel for three hours when he saw that the main tunnel was divided into three smaller ones. The first tunnel was on fire. The second tunnel was home to a nest of venomous snakes, and the third tunnel was filled with explosives. Which tunnel should Tom take to continue his prison break? He should choose the tunnel with fire. He can put the fire out with the dust from the ground and make his way to freedom. Yeah! Sierra wanted to go to her favorite band's concert, but she didn't have enough money to buy the tickets. Her local radio station was putting on a contest and the winner would get tickets to the show. All she had to do was answer their riddle correctly. She called the radio station and they asked her, every night I'm told what to do and each morning I do what I'm told but I still can't escape your scold. What am I? Sierra won the tickets. Can you guess what she answered? The correct answer is an alarm clock. Sounds just about right, doesn't it? Amy woke up on an estranged island. She looked everywhere for something that could help her escape and found nothing. In the following days, she continued to look for something that could give her some direction and came across three torn pieces of paper that could be joined to make one. She put everything together and managed to escape the island by water using no other resources than the things she found. Can you figure out how she managed to do that? This one is tricky. Nothing was the name of the boat she found abandoned on the island. Ooh. Then she found torn pieces of paper that together made up a map. The map helped to guide her to the nearest inhabited island and the boat helped her get out by water. Yes! Mirabelle walked into her father's deli and asked for a sandwich to go. When she looked to her right, she noticed something extremely out of the ordinary. Ah. Take a look at this image. Can you tell what it was? turtle is hiding under the counter. This sure isn't normal. Molly, Holly, and Sally are going to the prom in a fancy limousine, but the car breaks down on the way. The party hall is nearby, so the ladies decide to walk. Suddenly, it starts to rain. Luckily, all three ladies have umbrellas, but still, one of them gets wet. Can you guess who? Polly, her skirt is wider than the diameter of her umbrella. Finally, the ladies arrive at the prom. All of their friends look very elegant and fancy. Leah is wearing very expensive designer shoes. Bella carries a Chanel bag. Alice is taking selfies with the latest smartphone. And Kim is showing off a sparkling diamond necklace. But in fact, only one of them is wealthy. Can you guess who? Take a closer look at the logo. Bella's Chanel bag is fake. Ah. Leah's shoes are way bigger than her feet, so she probably borrowed them from someone else. As for Alice, the smartphone in her hand is not hers. It has Kim's name on it, so Kim is the richest person here. Kim goes to the dance floor. Bobby, Billy, and Kenny invite her to dance. 
but one of these guys was bitten by a vampire, so he's not safe to dance with. Can you guess who? Bobby has a red mark on his shirt, but it's just lipstick. Billy's drinking something red, but it's just a cherry punch. Meanwhile, Kenny doesn't have any shadow, so he's a vampire. Kim goes to the ladies' room, but all three stalls are occupied. There's a robot inside one of them. Can you guess where? Let's take a look at the first lady's feet. Ouch! She's rubbed multiple corns with her fancy sandals. She can't be a robot. As for the third lady, her pedicure is too messy for a robot. Oh. Therefore, the robot is in the second stall. Bella asks Kim to take her picture. Kim takes a couple of shots. Can you find three differences between them? Here they are. Kim goes back to the party and spots a runaway criminal among the guests. Can you see this person too? It's the show host. He's hiding a prison robe under his suit. At the party, Bella gets bitten by a vampire too. Oh God. Kim takes her to the hospital. They meet two doctors in the lobby. One of them is an imposter. Can you guess who? Real doctors wear gloves, and the woman on the right doesn't wear any. Mm. Bella gets into a hospital ward with three other people. One of them is not sick. Can you guess who? The woman on the left looks perfectly healthy. She has her lipstick on and a glamorous hairstyle. Although her arm is broken, it doesn't mean that she's sick. Kim comes home from a long day. She's very excited to treat herself with a bubble bath. She's been dreaming about it all day. But someone used up all her bubble foam. Kim interrogates her family members. Father says, I spent all day at the garage repairing my old car and I haven't visited the bathroom yet. Hmm. Mother says, I was feeling sick all day, so I didn't pay any attention to your beauty products. Hmm. And Kim's brother says, it wasn't me who took your bubble foam, but I think it was mom. Hmm. Who did it? Take a closer look at dad's beard. There's pieces of foam on it. Busted. The next night, Kim goes to a sleepover with her friends. One of them is a werewolf. Can you guess who? This guy is a werewolf. Take a look at his claws. Oh no. Kim puts some cash in a stash in her room and leaves for Granny's house. In a couple of days, Kim returns and realizes that someone had stolen her money. How did she guess? Kim's stash was in this book. It was on the shelf when she left, and now the book is gone. Oh God. Kim runs to the living room and yells at her family. Who stole my book? Everyone swears to have nothing to do with the robbery, but Kim spots the thief right away. What about you? It's the brother. He used the book as a stand for his PlayStation. Kim is watching a TV program about risky sports. Oh. Can you help her guess which guy has a better chance of survival? Oh God. The one who's falling into the snow has a higher chance to survive. Hitting the water can be tough, and he still needs to get out of the ocean. 
Kim's dad wants to buy a boat. His agent arranges a meeting with three people. Each tells a brief story about their boats. Karen says, My husband gave me this boat five years ago as a wedding gift. That's why it has my name. But now I want to sell it because we don't use it. Charles says, I inherited this boat from my father. It works very well, but I don't need it because I'm moving abroad. And Liam says, I built this boat on my own, but now I'm building a bigger one, so I'd like to sell it to get some cash. One of the sellers is lying. Can you spot who? Take a closer look at the first boat. Its name is Karma, not Karen. Therefore, she's a liar. Oh. Kim goes to the nearby hardware store to buy something for her home. Kim asks, how much for the one? The shopkeeper replies, it's two dollars. Then Kim asks, how much for 11? The shopkeeper replies, it's four dollars. And finally, Kim asks, how much for a hundred? And the shopkeeper replies, six dollars. What is Kim buying? She's buying a house number. Each digit costs $2. Kim's cat, Fluffy, ran away. She's been looking for him in a forest all evening. Finally, she gets tired and heads home. But suddenly, she sees a witch's house on the way. Kim enters and faces the witch. Fluffy is sitting on her lap. The witch says, I'll release your cat if you crack my riddle. I have two besties who are identical twins. Emma was born in 2003 and Gemma in 2004. How is it possible? They're twins, but they were born on New Year's Eve. Emma was born right before midnight and Gemma right after midnight. Duh. The next day, Kim meets a handsome guy who likes puzzles. She asks his name, but instead of answering directly, the guy writes a date on a piece of paper. Huh. Can you help Kim figure out his name? Each number implies a particular letter of the alphabet. The guy's name is Theo. Mm. Theo invites Kim to an art exhibition. Mm. Take a look at these squares. Which one is bigger, yellow or green? Mm. All these black and white squares usually confuse perception, but it becomes obvious that the green square is larger than the yellow one if we put them away. Kim asks Theo, what month were you born? He replies with four emojis. Can you guess the month? Jack-o-lantern stands for J. The next emoji implies U. Nut stands for N. And eggplant stands for E. Theo was born in June. Kim and Theo go for a walk in an abandoned village. They see a sign leading to a famous haunted castle. There are four possible routes, but only one of them will actually lead them to the castle. Can you figure out the correct way? It's way easier to untangle this maze if you start drawing from the final destination. They should take route B. Finally, Kim and Theo find the castle. They enter the property and see a fancy living room. There are six zombies hiding in the living room. Can you spot them? Hello! The guys run away from the zombies and hide in the basement. They wander around and see three doors. Suddenly, the basement begins to get filled with water. Kim and Theo have to choose a door quickly to escape. But each door has a surprise. There's a tank with a family of sharks behind the first door, 
there's a deep hole with sharp venomous corals behind the second door, and there's a tank with piranhas behind the third door. Which door is more or less safe? The second door. The basement is full of water, so they can swim over the corals. Sarah was a famous guitar player in a popular rock band. On Friday, the band was going to have a big gig. Sarah's bandmates were waiting for her, but the girl was very late. Eventually, she did show up, but the band members spotted there was something off with her. That's when Kyle, the lead singer, shouted, That's not Sarah! It must be Anna, her identical twin sister! As it turns out, Anna locked Sarah in her bedroom, stole her guitar, and showed up to play the gig in her sister's place. Take a look at Anna. How did Kyle figure out that she wasn't Sarah? Look at Anna's fingernails. They're huge! As a guitar player, Sarah always kept her nails pretty short. That's a common practice, you know, in order to play better. A man came to the local farmer's market to sell watermelons. After he sold half of the watermelons and half of another watermelon, he saw he had one watermelon left. How can you tell how many watermelons he took to the farmer's market in the first place? He went there with three watermelons. Cheryl ran into her house extremely worried. I set off as soon as I heard the news, she told the police officer. I was at my parents' house in another town. What happened to my husband? Well, the police said, somebody hurt Mr. Brown and he ended up in the hospital. He's going to be okay, but we still need to find out who did this to him. The police officer has questioned three suspects so far. Mr. Brown's secretary said, I was sent to visit Mr. Brown's business partner in the morning. Some important documents needed signatures. The cook said, I haven't left the kitchen today. Mr. Brown wanted me to prepare a meal for him and his wife. The housekeeper said, I didn't hear anything. I was doing some household chores all day long. After that, I was so tired. I decided to take a nap. The police officer realized who the culprit was in no time. Can you figure out who did it? It was the cook. Mr. Brown probably didn't ask him to cook anything for his wife, since she was out of town all along. These are Julia and Maria. They are both very attractive young women that have no trouble finding boyfriends. Today is Valentine's Day, and they're both going to hang out with their loved ones. One of them is currently dating three people, though. So she's probably going to run from date to date. Just by looking at this image, can you tell which one it is? It's Maria, the one on the left. If you look at her workstation, she's got three presents lined up, one for each person she's currently seeing. Olivia was running a marathon. Right before the finish line, she did her best and outran the person who was running in second place. The woman was happy and excited that she was going to win, but in a few seconds, she got very disappointed. Why? Because Olivia finished in second place when she wanted to finish first. This is what happened. She was fast enough to outrun the person who was going to win second place. But she wasn't fast enough to outrun the person who finished first. But hey, it's a good result anyway. Amanda loves dogs very much. One day, she was on her usual runs through Central Park when she saw an adorable corgi. The dog was friendly and Amanda even pet the animal. Soon, the pooch's owner appeared and the girl asked him how old the dog was. Well, in two years, Luna will be twice as old as she was five years ago. Amanda nodded and continued her walk. Did you understand how old the dog was? Luna is 12 years old. 
Not so hard to figure that out, huh? Liza worked as a teaching assistant at a college. That day, she had to look after a group of students who were writing an exam. Liza knew some of them were going to cheat, and indeed, soon after the exam, the girl spotted one person who was cheating. Take a look at the image. Can you tell who it was? It's the guy in the back of the classroom. He's got the answers written on his arm. What an old-fashioned way to cheat. Hey. Jake wakes up locked up in a basement. He has no idea how it happened or who's behind this. Near his bed, he finds a note. The note said, 2 plus 2 equals fish. 3 plus 3 equals 8. 7 plus 7 equals triangle. Explain this and you'll be free. Can you help Jacob get out of the basement? This is a tricky one. What you need to do is overlay the numbers on top of each other, but you've got to flip the numbers in the second row backwards. This way, you'll get the image of a fish, of the number 8, and of a triangle. Yikes! There are three important rooms in the house. The first room is a library full of rare books. The second room stores piles of money and gold. And the third room has boxes full of expensive jewelry in it. In case of a fire emergency, which room should police officers try to extinguish the fire first? The correct answer is none. Policemen don't fight fire, do they? That's the job of firefighters. Detective Hugh was called to arrest a notorious thief known by the name Pink Face. He was a master of disguise and magic tricks and had been on the run for years. But when Detective Hugh got a call with Pink Face's exact location, he hurried to the spot. He arrived and saw the thief trying to run away. The detective ran after him and saw him getting inside an old trash can. There were four cans side by side, and as the detective ran towards them, they started moving around. Oh no! The detective shouted. Can you guess which trash can Pink Face was hidden inside? It's the third can on the right. Let's watch a quick replay. Pink Face got inside the first trash can, but when they got mingled up, it turned out to be the third one on the right. That was close! Monica had a hard time remembering what she needed to buy once she got to the supermarket, so she was trying a new technique. She drew images of everything she needed to buy and scattered them around the house. This way, she would easily remember her grocery list. Take a look around Monica's living room and memorize all the scattered items in her house. Now, can you choose correctly everything she needed to buy from this image? Yep, bananas, tomatoes, avocados, grapes, cilantro, limes, and watermelon. You got it! John was trekking in the woods when he found the entrance to a cave. He decided to explore inside, but after a few hours, he noticed he was lost. Suddenly, he found two possible exits, but each tunnel had a guard on the door. One of the guards told him that both of the tunnels led to traps. John asked the other guard if he could trust his information, and the guard said no. In that cave, only one guard told the truth, while the other always lied. To verify which guard was telling the truth, John decided to ask them both the same question. Which question did John ask the guards? John asked, would the other guards say these tunnels led to the exit? If they answered no, then John would know he was safe to follow the tunnels and get out of the cave. Two friends are sitting at the same table in a cafe. One of them is speaking about a TV show he began to produce. The second is talking about the birthday party he is about to throw next week. 
The other people at the cafe are annoyed by the men's loud voices. But why is this dialogue so strange? Well, these two guys aren't speaking to each other. They're talking on their phones through headphones.